Yes, this is something new, but AWS WAF bot control, the word bot actually sounds familiar to a lot of you. I know you must be thinking like, oh, this is like this will control bots very easy. No, not exactly. Yeah, it has something to do with controlling bots, but there is a twist. So there will be good bots and bad bots, isn't it? And AWS WAF bot control helps you manage bot activity to your site by categorizing and identifying common bots, verifying generally desirable bots and detecting high confidence signature of bots so that you can identify which are good and which are bad and allow or block requests based on that. And as it is written here, bot control primarily targets self-identifying non-targeted bots in order to give you the ability to monitor and control this category of bot traffic. So there are properties by which you can identify a bot. So some bot actually project themselves with information to make them trustworthy and some don't but these properties are what makes bot control effective but i don't want to confuse you right now so if you're new and you might be thinking what is a bot and why is it called a bot let's talk about that so a bot is nothing but a software or a program that runs automatic or automation tasks or scripts or programs over the internet so you might have heard some people bragging about writing a bot that checks for a price of a commodity and if it's available in stock, it adds the product to the shipping cart. Yeah, it's nothing but a script. You can run it periodically to execute the task that you want. So the word bot comes from robot or web robot or internet robot. And there are times that you need to execute a task, but you want to perform that repeatedly. So in order to avoid the manual repetitive task, you automate it by using what we call as bots. And as I told you, bot is nothing but a software or a program that runs automation tasks or script or program over the internet. It will get your job done. But having said that, bot is a fancy name, but anything that you feel acts as per the instructions you provide, and it also seems interesting to others, that's what makes bots very popular among people. And there are good and bad bots as we spoke before. So good ones we have like web crawler bots for use for shopping. This is both good and bad. If you're trying to become a scalper, then that's bad. And we have chatbots that have predefined responses, information bots. They provide you details about places and dates or appointments. And obviously search engine bots like Google bot or Baidu bot, or we have Bing bots as well. And the bad ones that we have here are like hackers and spammers and brute force login bots. Sorry. And we have the brute force login bots, which continuously pretend to be the user and try a brute force login with multiple attempts. So they do a hit and trial approach to find the password. So they get access to the application that they want access to. But when you think in a way that you are a host, these bots can be a headache for you and they need to be controlled. The good ones should be allowed and the bad ones should be blocked. And as I already told you before, like there are ways we can detect the bot as mentioned here, like there are two primary sources of information required to identify a fake bot. The first one is HTTP header user agent and the second one is IP addresses. So if you have seen the request header of a request, basically it might give you the information about what browser is being used and fake bots can use something that is similar to popular browsing websites or sites like uh, using the same user agent string used by Google or Bing or Mozilla. So that they can so that they can pretend they are the good bots and ip addresses also we have so you can as well check the ip address and match it if it appears to come from a valid search engine provider network like google or mozilla or bing and if it does not then you can blacklist that so when we get a request from bot or the user the first contact point they have before getting the data from the web application is waf itself so as you can see in the diagram so using waf bot control you can effectively configure as per your requirement, you can specify default configurations to mitigate the bot. That is the first point that you see, that's configure. Next, we have bot control where we actually detect the presence of the bots. And the third thing is visibility. Now that you have configured and now you're able to detect the presence of bot, you are able to control the flow and you can as well visualize and monitor the bot control activity by creating your own custom dashboards in CloudWatch as well. So that's it. But I know you would be thinking we haven't discussed any real time architectures for bot control. So let's do that. So now let's see the architecture for identifying and blocking fake crawler bots using AWS WAF. So before starting designing this or understanding the way we can identify the fake bots, let's go back to something that we already discussed. So remember there were 
two primary sources of information required to identify a fake bot. So the first one was HTTP header user agent and the second one was IP address. So HTTP header user agent, if you have seen the request header of a request, it might give you the information about what browser is being used and fake bots can use something that is similar to popular browsers like using the same user agent string used by Google or Bing or Mozilla. Something like Mozilla 5.0 and the machine it's being requested from and the Google Chrome version or even Apple WebKit. So this information can be simulated from a real device and if this data resembles the one with Google bot or Bing bot then you can detect that it is a fake bot because it is trying to pretend to be a valid bot using the same strings used by the valid bots. So next is IP address. So you can as well check the address and match it if it appears to come from a valid search engine provider network like Google or Mozilla or Bing. So if you found the fake bot, then we know the IP and we can store the IP and mark it as blacklisted so that we can ensure that the IP isn't allowed anymore. So you can actually extract the client IP address for requests with the user agent set to one of the allowed bots and verify it. So now that we have the solution, let's implement it for a website that is hosted on a static web hosting by S3. So our main ingredients here are first, obviously we will use WAF2, which is the latest version of WAF, which was released in November 2019. We'll host our website in static website hosting with S3 with our CloudFront CDN giving access using OAI or what we call as origin access identity so that you can see that in the lower half of the design. So the easy request that you see here, the WAF v2, the CloudFront and the static website hosting, that is where we'll host the website. And for the real-time log streaming, we'll make use of Amazon AWS, Kinesis Firehose and S3 to store them for analysis. So it will be stored on S3. And the Lambda function to capture the blacklisted fake bot IP address and to log information again to S3. So the next time it sends the request again, it will be restricted at the WAF level itself. And that's it. That's how you identify and mitigate fake bots. So when you get a good request, like from the good bot, like Google or Bing, you can validate it. And if it then you can, then you can pass it forward to the CloudFront CDN, then it will get access to the S3 content or the website content. And if there is a fake bot and the request comes from a fake bot, then AWS WAF actually detects the presence of a 